you, Johnny Olson. <laughs> Greetings, friends. Our first guest today is an authority on American folk culture. That's all I get to say here? It wasn't even worth sitting down for. I didn't get any rest. All right, we'll meet him right after we meet our panel here on To Tell the Truth. Bert Conley. Peggy Cannon. Bill Cullen. And Kitty Carlisle. Boy, Kitty, that'll drive the cameraman crazy. I'll oh, tell you. you. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Well, <clears throat> close attention. Let us now meet a man immersed in folk memorabilia. Number one, what is your name, please? Chief. Number two. Speak up. Number three. Well, now, friends, you know that we don't have any wooden contestants on our show. Not any more often than we can help. But today we do have wooden Indians. And that, of course, is why they wouldn't answer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder they cut everything down. Yeah, let's bring up the lights and bring out the real contestants, and Johnny will try it again. Number one. What is your name, please? My name is Frederick Freed. This is a wooden scout. It was created in the New York shop probably during the 1880s. Number two. My name is Frederick Freed. This is a little Indian used inside and outside the back of the shops during the 1870s. Number three. My name is Frederick Freed, and this is my score made by the famous Samuel A. Roth. All right, and the job, of course, is to find out which is the real Frederick Freed, and here is his story. I, Frederick Freed, am an art historian. I have made a thorough study of the memorable wood carvings of circus wagons, show figures, and cigar store Indians of the past 400 years. The first known illustration of an Indian as a sign for a tobacconist store dates back to 1617 in England. Here is a theatrical figure in wood, made to stand in front of playhouses and vaudeville theaters during the 1880s. And this is a cast zinc figure of punch used as a window attraction for a cigar store. And here is a carver's impression of a typical baseball player of the 1880s. Few Indians guard cigar stores anymore. I have written a book on the ingenious and virtually ignored wood carvers of a bygone era. I call my book Artists in Wood, signed Frederick Freed. <laughs> and we're going to be back and question these gentlemen in just a moment as soon as we enrich ourselves somewhat. Extreme Golf. Now, keep it firmly in mind, my friends, that all three of these gentlemen claim to be Frederick Freed art historian, authority on cigar store Indians, and author of Artists in Wood. And let's start the question with Peggy Cass, why not? Well, n number one, my name is not Peggy Cass for nothing. How much is that big Indian worth? All the traffic will bear. Oh, well, I know, but like, what, does that, that can be No, it depends upon where it's sold, who wants it. I'd say it's probably worth around $1,000, $1,100. Uh -huh. I know that sometimes they have auctions and they sell it. Uh, number three, what famous people, like actors, have been carved out of wood? Well, I suppose uh, Thomas uh, Dartmouth Rice, the comedian of the uh, 1900s, uh, and his... Um, well, everybody knows what a famous person he was. <laughs> Tom Dartmouth Rice. Number one, uh, do you know what tinsel prints are? Tinsel prints? Yes. No, I don't. Okay. Uh, number two, could you... Uh, uh, this is obviously an art that has died out. I mean, why do people not do this anymore? There aren't enough carvers around which have been trained to do it. Well, did they used to, like, go to a carving school? No, they were trained by a master carver. It was an apprenticeship, journeyman, etc. Well, well, number three, how long would it take you to take a person to become a really terrific carver that we could get to do first-class Indian work? Well, there's no really knowing that now because they were made so many years ago. 
However, you'd say uh, after a man became a carver, it would take him about uh, one figure about a week. Oh, well, number one. Fast man. Bill Cullen? I think it was number two who said there, the reason that was a dying art, there weren't enough carvers around. Number two, aside from their value historically and uh, folklore-wise, would you say these were particularly good carvings, number two? Yes, they are. Uh, number, three, number three, I'll ask you, don't you think there are wood carvers around now who setting out to carve an Indian or something like that could carve a better Indian than those? Well, they wouldn't use the axe, which was used in those days. When, when, what days were they, number three? Well, we can go back to William Rush in the middle of the 18th century. Mm -hmm. And um, the only wood carving that we have on display now is above Tiffany's. Thank you. Which is uh, the axe. Uh, number one, aren't the tools that the carvers use today, those few around, still primarily identically the same, really, as the ones Oh, sure. They, uh, they, they carve, yes. Uh, number, number two, uh, the figureheads on ships, is that uh, discussed in your book? I, it wasn't mentioned in the affidavit. Number two. It is discussed in the book. It is? Yes. It's always been a hobby of mine. Beautiful, yeah, oh, they're beautiful. gorgeous. Anne and Kitty? Well, number one, number three said they used it axes to carve in, in, in his time. Hardy. Uh, do, do your, did your wooden Indians get carved by axes or just ordinary tools? It was roughed with an axe, uh -huh. but the actual detail that you see here in the hand workmanship was really I done with, you know. Number two, number three held on to the, the third figure and said, this is my squaw. <laughs> uh, he's not married to a squaw, is he, at the moment? I'm not aware of his personal uh, Oh, life. yes, of course you are. <laughs> Who is Sam Rolfe, number two? Sam? Rolfe. Sam Rolfe? Mm -hmm. I'm not familiar with a Sam Rolfe. I know a William Rolfe. Well, who is William Rolfe? William Rolfe was a man who established a colony in, in Virginia. Oh, I see. I number think the two of you, by the way, not to confuse you, I think you're mispronouncing things uh, mutually. Oh. Well, spell the last name you wanted. I wanted the Sam Rolfe number three was talking about. He said Ralph, I oh, think. Oh, Ralph, said Ralph, I see. He's oh, talking see. about two different people. Oh, thank you for putting me straight. <laughs> <think> Rush. <laughs> Number three said Rush. <laughs> and I should have kept my mouth shut. I just didn't want you to be misled. He was not talking about the same man no. as you were. And whoever says the secret word, the duck flies down and we go to Bird Condit. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I thought he said Rice, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, which one was the comedian? Which one was the, the carver? Was Ooh, Rolf oh, or Rob? Who cares? You mean uh, Rob? Mind. I'm sorry, number Daniel two. Daniel A. Rob was the carver, and, and T. Oh, Dartmouth Rice was the comedian. There we are. There you We've go. We've got it all straightened out. Now, where were we? Oh, number two, why, uh, what is the significance of an Indian uh, being in front of a tobacco shop? I don't know. Well, Could the Indians know? were the first to grow tobacco in the colonies. Right. Number one, why, why England in 1612 and not here? Well, originally, uh, when tobacco was brought back to the old world. England was really the leader in terms of um, the exploiting of the weed, and of course the original permanent settlements were by England in tobacco growing areas. Right. Number three, uh, wh where was the center of wood carving uh, wh when these were made, for instance? Well, they could have been all over, in Pennsylvania, in New York City. For example, Samuel Robb and DeMuth, William DeMuth were in New York City.